Hi, my name is Dibbendu Ash and I'm an avid bird watcher and one of the founder members of Swing Wild. Apart from big cat exploration, we can share stories and magnificent bird fauna experience. And here I was asked to make a video covering the diverse avian fauna of India from my Swing Wild. So, here it is. In the past nine years, I had extensively traveled in different parts of our beautiful country. And it had been an amazing journey for me to be associated with going by. Out there in the wilderness of India, you find close to 1300 different bird species. I would not request you for our channel subscription. It is entirely your choice. Now let me take you to different bird habitats of our country. I hope you will enjoy this. Now, I am going to describe forests. We have a varied forested landscape in the region, starting from snow-capped mountains of animals where you experience rhododendrons and moist oak birch forest. In the high alpine region, you see flat pheasants in the king. Or you see a sclater's monal, yeah, in eastern Arunachal Pradesh, in Mishmin. But there are many other birds like finches, steeds, and their alley which are present. Little below in oak barge rhododendron subalpine forest, uh, Timalide babbler groups are dominant. Now, what are Timalide? These are old world babblers and they are real skulkers, and you may not succeed in a single visit to cover all the species. They are very funny and they will make you dance for hours. The tiniest 9 cm wind babblers to the medium size uh, babblers to largest of the family, the scimitar babblers, are present in the mid and lower elevation forest across Himalayas. And these birds you don't generally get uh, once you come down off hills or once if you are in high Himalayas. You don't see them. You see them exclusively in mid and low altitude forest. Now comes the Central Indian forest, the tropical deciduous saltic forest. Actually, it covers most of the landmass of India. Though diversity is less in the region, I mean the bird diversity is very less. However, some species are chiefly confined to this specific habitat. I am much endemic to the region. And much of the lower hills and in Terai foot hills and plains uh, you see tropical deciduous forests. These are the five bird images. Uh, you see them in tropical deciduous forests. <clears throat> now I'm going to describe the scrub forest. In such places, trees can't grow because of soil and extreme climatic conditions. But the typical vegetation naturally grows. Such places exist in semi-arid desert of western India at extreme high altitude in the Himalayas. The semi-arid desert of western India is home to many habitat specific birds, for example, white neptune. The semi-arid desert bird prefer dry thorn scrub forest. Now, for these particular species, there are two disjunct populations are there. One is in western India and another one is in southern India. Another dry scrub forest bird from mainland India uh, can be Marshall Diabat or Vital Diabat. Okay. Uh, now see these images of Marshall Diabat. Yeah. And thereafter I am going to describe high Himalayan scrub forest which are occupied by relatively lesser number of birds. Yeah. Very thin bird population there. Some accenters some uh, larks and some sand browsers, they only prefer scrub bats. However, these birds are not solely dependent on scrub habitat alone, but uh, they are found in, they can be found in forest ages, like wetland as well. Now, wetland. Wetlands are supported by rich array of waterfowl distribution. India has abundant wetland, which uh, cover along its length and depth. There are some handsome number of species which are resident breeders, where most of them use India's major staging ground and wintering ground. 
the high altitude glacial lake, the brackish marshland, the river in bales, the mangroves are the places where these birds are distributed throughout. Yeah, high altitude lakes mean, I mean, lake complex of Ladakh, the lake complex of uh, North Sikkim, and uh, some lake complex of uh, Arunachal. These high altitude lakes are the staging grounds for these uh, waterfalls. And in brackish marshland also you see them and uh, when they come down in winter, um, you see them on the way, on the on the flyway. They follow the rivers, they follow those gaps and they come uh, to the coastal area. Now I must mention Chilicala, which is a brackish lagoon and a major bar for for eastern India. Similarly, lesser run of Kutch in western India where vast saline flats are feeding down for climbing. It's a fascinating place. Coming to grassland, the, now when I say grassland, the first and foremost place that stuck in my mind is the Brahmaputra Plateau. Yeah, in Lower Asham, it is a major wintering ground for most of the ducks found in India. Yes, the most of the ducks. All these grasslands from Ganga and Brahmaputra Basin are seasonally flooded. A whole lot of waterfowls come with. And one more interesting species, like a fence weaver, uh, for instance, uh, they breed uh, on these uh, seasonally flooded uh, uh, terai weed beds. And the best known breeding ground for the species is in southeastern uh, Uttarakhand, in Bor Gularbhaj area for this sort of species. And uh, this fence weaver is also uh, a very critically endangered uh, species. Now, it is not only the wet grassland patches which are important for conservation. Some arid grasslands are also important. These uh, grassland patches are habitat for some of the region's most endemic grassland birds. Uh, yeah. Here, landscape and climatic condition is as that of a desert. In Jaisalmer district of Thar Desert, some patches of grassland exist where a very much regional endemic and critically endemic species tribe, the great Indian bird. Yeah. And here you see these images of great Indian bird, how they are hiding in the tall grass. So these grasslands are very important habitat for birds. Now coming to the desert landscape. In the entire subcontinent, India is blessed to have a considerably uh, you know, large desert cover. These parts receive a very little rain because of geography of the region, mostly sand grouses, some larks, and some scrub birds like shrikes, etc. found. And, uh, whereas in the higher Himalayas, a desert also exists. Yeah. Yeah, the wind is so thin, the mountains are so high that uh, humid monsoon winds don't penetrate till that height. Some snow finches and mountain finches are found there. Snow finches from cold deserts of North Sikkim are uh, like uh, Rufus Neck snow finches, uh, Tibetan snow finches, White Run snow finches. We see them exclusively in the North, in the Tibetan plateau area. And the large, um, large Capodacus rose finches are also found there, like uh, Capodacus rose finches. I mean to say, the great rose finch. Uh, red fronted rose finch, for instance, yeah, these are the rose finches you see in uh, uh, higher Himalayas in the in desert condition. So, I end this video. I would like to ask you which type of bird watching landscape you love the most. Uh, is it uh, high Himalayas, or the sea, and the deep sea, or the desert landscape, or the scrub forest? Uh, you just share your opinion and views in the comment section. And let us know. And thanks for watching and stay tuned to our channel.